Welcome back for requirement six of the Engineering Merit Badge. This is Tim Brown of the National Advanced Driving Simulator at the University of Iowa again. Um, and we're going to talk today a little bit more about different types of engineering. And so this requirement is going to kind of be the, the biggest portion of your responsibility as you go through the Engineering Merit Badge. It's probably going to take you the most time. And so Today, we're going to talk a little bit about what your options are, and you're going to have to choose two of the options that we have outlined to complete this requirement. Um, we've got seven options available here, and as I said, two of them are going to be ones that you have to choose to do on your own and then document in the workbook. And so the options we have are laid out here transforming motion, using electricity, understanding electronics, using materials, converting energy, moving people, or building an engineering project. And so let's dig into these one at a time and talk about what you need to do if you choose that option. Again, you can choose any two of these, uh, but you must choose two. So the first option, 6A, is transforming motion. Using common materials or a construction set, make a simple model that will demonstrate motion. Explain how the model uses basic mechanical concepts like levers and inclined planes to demonstrate motion. And then you're going to describe an example where this mechanism is used in a real product. And so um, this one, you get to use your imagination uh, and you know transform motion, whether that's uh, through rotation or through levers. Um, you know, those are all options you've got available to you. And so uh, use a little bit of imagination, uh, use a construction set uh, and, and dig into this one. Uh, the second option is using electricity. So for this one, you're gonna make a list of 10 electrical appliances in your home. So you can go through and look at your refrigerator, your stove, your washer, your dryer, your air conditioner, um, your blender, your radio, your TV. There's countless things in your house that use electricity. Um, and you're going to find out approximately how much electricity each uses in one month. And so uh, if you still have project pro product documentation, uh, you may be able to look that up to get a general idea how much it uses in abstract. Um, if you've got a smart home, uh, you might be able to look up some of those some of those data directly from your electrical grid uh, and, and, and track which outlets are using which amount of electricity. Um, but you don't have to get to that level of detail. Uh, you should be able to find information about how much uh, they use in general. Um, and you might ask your parents if you've got uh, the recent electrical bill so you can understand the overall uh, power being consumed in your house. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you're going to find out how the amount and cost of electricity used in your home during periods of light and heavy use. And so um, you might look at uh, the air conditioner and look at how much electricity that uses in the winter versus the spring or fall versus the summer. And so you want to understand how this use pattern changes. Um, I'm sitting at home right now, uh, just from a timing standpoint, I'm at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so I'm sure that I'm using more electricity uh, and I'm using more uh, more heat uh, from a gas standpoint, uh, but obviously the fan is working more on, on my, the electric fan is working more on my uh, furnace system because I'm at home and my, I've disabled the turn down during the day when no one's home aspect of my my home furnace. And so uh, those are things you can explore. And then ultimately, at the end of the day, what we want you to do is then tell five ways you could conserve electricity. So after you've explored that, you can look at uh, how electricity might be conserved. And I've given you a hint there with, uh, with the thermostat in terms of uh, controlling electricity, both in the winter and the summer. For 6C, electro understanding electronics. Uh, for this one, you're going to use an electronic device such as a mobile telephone or portable digital media player. 
and find out how sound travels from one location to another. Uh, you're then going to explain how the device was designed for ease of use, function, and durability. And so this is going to require you to do a little bit of digging depending upon the technology that you look at um, and figure out how the how sound is transmitted and then uh, look at, you know, we talked about me being a human factors engineer before, uh, looking at the ease of use function and durability of that is an important aspect of human factors, at least for the ease of use. Um, and uh, you'll have plenty of time to dig into that. 6D is using materials. Um, for this one, we want you to do an experiment to show the difference in strength and heat conductivity in wood, metal, and plastic. Uh, want you to be want you to be cautious about this one um, in terms of how you do it. And so, um, you know, we can all look at things like uh, the coolers we use on camp out to keep our cold food cold food cold. Uh, and so when we pack eggs or milk and we want to keep them cold on the camp out, uh, we don't put them in a wooden box or a cardboard box. We put them in a cooler that's designed for, for, for keeping the, the temperature different. Um, similarly, when we're doing winter camping, we've got a hot chocolate. Uh, we want a cup that's not going to transmit that heat to us. And so um, there's a variety of ways you can do this, but you're going to be charged with figuring out how to set up an experiment where you can look at the transmission of uh, heat from through one of these three stuff uh, through these three substances so um, we'll let you dig into that once you've done that I want you to document in the workbook what you did what the experiment was and then what you learned next up is converting energy um, on this one, we want you to do an experiment to show how mechanical, heat, chemical, solar, and or electrical energy may be converted from one or more types of energy to another. Um, set that experiment up and explain your results. Describe what energy is and how energy is converted and used in your surroundings. And so, um, you know, some things to think about there is, uh, when I've gone camping, I've had cases where I brought a solar charger along so I can keep my my phone, uh, which I use for taking pictures, uh, charged when I'm doing a weekend camp out uh, without having to carry a battery pack uh, that's, that's fully charged. And so, um, you know, there's some options here. Uh, I'll let, leave it to you to dig into it and figure out which uh, one makes the most sense for you and your interests. Uh, and then I want you to document that and your results. Next up is moving people. Uh, this one is near and dear to my heart again uh, due to our work in the transportation field. Um, for this one, we want you to find out different ways people in your community get to work. Uh, and so depending upon the, the, the area of the country you live in, uh, this could be very different, um, whether it's mass transit or driving, uh, buses, trains, cars, Ubers, uh, look into all those and document the, the ways that people get from one place to another uh, to work. And then we want you to make a study of traffic flow, number of vehicles and relative speed in both heavy and light traffic periods. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways to do the traffic flow study. Um, and in some cases, uh, it may be easier than others. Uh, you may, you know, you may be sitting at home and you may look and do a traffic study out your front door and look at traffic flow by your house um, uh, during the morning or evening commute and then also do it uh, you know, during the middle of the day or in the evening when there's less traffic going by. Another option you've got is that some places have live camera feeds from their, uh, from their uh, traffic management system. And so you can go online and watch traffic flowing by in real time. And so this allows you to potentially get to an area that you might not otherwise get to. And so uh, you can explore some of those online and, and watch those camera feeds and then document it. And again, what you want to do for the flow study is you want to look at number of vehicles and relative speeds over a fixed period of time. And so you might look over a, over a five minute window uh, 
10 minute window, half hour window, whatever makes sense depending upon the, the amount of traffic that flows by your area in light and heavy times and document uh, what that looks like. And then when that's done, we want you to document uh, what you did, uh, discuss with your counselor, which is me, uh, what might be improved to make it easier for people in your community to get where they need to go. And so uh, look at the options and uh, based on the traffic flow study and on the ways that people currently use to get to work, uh, how that process can be made better. And when all is said and done, you're going to document that as one of the two projects in the workbook. And the last option uh, is 6G, which is to build an engineering project. And so we want you to build an engineering project uh, and enter in a science or engineering fair or similar competition. Obviously, this one's going to require a longer period of time to do than some of the other ones, uh, but it is, it's a very rewarding opportunity. Uh, this requirement may be met by participation on an engineering competition project team. Um, and so discuss with your counselor what your project demonstrates, the kind of questions visitors to the fair asked you about and how well you were able to answer these questions. And so you know, for some of those you, who are on robotics teams, this may be a way of, of doing that, uh, depending upon the robotics team you're on and the sort of competitions you enter, that may be a good way of of digging into this one because most of those competitions start off with a general uh, challenge at the beginning that you have to meet by designing a robot that, that's able to do that. And so um, if you're on a robotics team, this may be an easy way for you to 6G done uh, by uh, doing what you enjoy in the robotics team and also uh, working on this requirement. With that, uh, that's the end of requirement six. As, as I said, this is the, this is the most fun part of this one, but also the piece that requires the most work. So I'm going to let you guys get off to choosing which two you want to complete. And when you're done with them, uh, document uh, the two that you chose in the project workbook. Uh, good luck as you explore different ways of uh, being involved in the engineering process and learning more about what engineering involves. With that, we'll see you next time for requirements seven.